Hello, Edinburgh. Hello, thank you. What a nice reception. Well, you know, this is my first, uh, my first stand-up uh, routine. It's my debut. Obviously, I'm a bit nervous. I'm excited as well. Uh, we are all now live on the radio. Uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> um, so listen, it's, uh, it's great to be here. I thought that I would start by getting my past out of the way. Let's just deal with this head on. Uh, in 1997, I was sacked from the children's television program, Blue Peter. Don't, don't, as long as you're just cheering the program Blue Peter, that's fine. Um, I'm assuming, just nod, I'm assuming that everyone here knows why I was sacked. Just nod. No, oh, no, right. No, no, no. Oh, no, someone else. Oh. Habitual lateness. <laughs> Habitual late. Man, they're tight on that show. I just turned up 20 minutes late to bathe the dog and then I'm out on my ear. Um, uh, thank you. I didn't, I didn't quite hear what he said. <laughs> and I think, that, I think that might be for the best. Um, but I was, I, look, well, he was, uh, that's obviously not true. I, I was sacked because I did something bad and I was exposed in a Sunday newspaper uh, for having a wild night out uh, and, and sacked with immediate effect. And I, I should have been sacked. What I did was wrong. I'm not proud of what I did. It was a bad thing. Uh, but the th <laughs> someone just said, what did you do? You know full well what I did. Um, but let me, look, look, look. Right. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, look, people, this is Five Live, not Talk Sport, okay? Please. Um, so, yeah, yes, look, you know why I was sacked, and I was sacked, but here's the thing. No, hang on, give me a sec. I, I am the only person that can tell you what it's like to be sacked from Blue Peter, and uh, do you know the strangest thing about losing your job on that program is that they take you into a room and they tell you your contract has been terminated, and then they make you hand in your Blue Peter badge. They make you hand in your badge. Yeah, like Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon. <laughs> Um, but like, like Mel Gibson, I know the pain of, uh, of losing that badge. One minute I could, by flashing that Blue Peter badge, get in free to a wide range of adequately good tourist attractions right across Britain. And the next, I was an ordinary citizen. An ordinary citizen just like you. Just like you and like you and like you. Not you, not that ordinary. More like you, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, just like you, I would have to pay to get in to the Motor Museum at Bewley in the extremely unlikely event that I ever wanted to get into the Motor Museum at Bewley. Uh, but I mention this, I'm going to move on from Blue Peter, but I have to deal with it because it, it, it follows me around, and wherever I go, I'm in the paper today. It mentions in the paper today a couple of times that I'm doing this kind of first stand-up set, and, and the, the, the newspaper articles mention Blue Peter, and it follows me around forever, and it doesn't matter what I go on to do from here with the rest of my life and the rest of my career. However big, however unlikely, bring peace to the Middle East, <laughs> cure cancer, invent the teleporter. When I die in the old bit in the newspaper, where you get, you get, I have my name and you get that one sentence explanation of who you are, it will say Richard Bacon, the only person ever to be sacked from Blue Peter. Oh, and he invented the teleporter. Um, but Blue Peter isn't the only uh, television show that I've presented. I've got quite a, a canon of work. I'm going to read out to you some of the other television programs that I have presented. Here we, you're laughing already. <laughs> Here they are. Rent free. Get staffed. <laughs> the, the big... I did a show called Get Staffed. The big idea. Castaway Exposed. Flip side, back to reality, 19 keys. It's like a parlor game in which you have to list TV shows you've never heard of. <laughs> uh, 
I, uh, but you know what? I learned a valuable lesson uh, from, those, from those shows as well. And that is, it's perfectly possible to lose television presenting gigs without doing anything illegal. Um, I'm, from, um, I'm from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. Heard of Mansfield? Yes. <laughs> okay. Someone appeared to boo Mansfield. Uh, I, I love Mansfield. I'm from Mansfield. I am the third most famous person from Mansfield. The list goes like this. It goes Rebecca Adlington, Alvin Stardust, and then me. And you know when you're the third most famous person from Mansfield that you're a minor celebrity. You're definitely a minor celebrity. I think number four on the list, if memory serves, is the fourth most person, famous person from Mansfield is Dan Whitehead, who runs Dan Whitehead's Sofa Workshop in Mansfield. And he, he pays for his own TV ads on local television. I mean, right now he has more screen time than I do. <laughs> Soon he'll be number three. Alvin Stardust will have to look over his shoulder a little bit. But I, and it's hard. It can be hard being a minor celebrity. This is a true story. I was in Leicester Square. I was in Leicester Square the other day, and there's a family there. And the father clocked me, and he, he, he looked at me, and he smiled, and he gestured towards his camera. And he said, hey, photo? And I said, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Of course. And so I, I put my arms around his daughters. He had two young daughters. I went round like that and put my arms around and smiled. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm, 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 I'm posing with you. I want you to take the photo. <laughs> it, was, it was a silly little misunderstanding, you know, we, we shook hands, we smiled, I made some phone calls later, and then I had him beaten up. Um, um, but I spent, growing up, I spent more time in Nottingham, so Mansfield's in Nottinghamshire, and I spent more of my adult life, and I worked in Nottingham. Um, and the Nottingham City Centre had this uh, tourist attraction called the Tales of Robin Hood, and for a long time... I was obsessed with the Tales of Robin Hood, and it shut down two weeks ago, just two weeks ago. And the Tales of Robin Hood had this little train that took you around the tourist attraction, and it took you past little waxworks of, like, Maid Marian, and then he went through uh, the Major Oak. And it, was, it shut down a few weeks ago because it was rubbish. It was a terrible tourist attraction. And this fact will give you a measure of just how bad the Tales of Robin Hood was. This is absolutely true. That little train that took the tourists around the Tales of Robin Hood was bought second-hand from an abattoir. <laughs> it was bought from an abattoir. So that train that took the tourists around in a previous life, had taken those animals on their final journey to the kill room, and then after that had transported their dead carcasses from the kill room to cold storage. And that was the same train. And I, I went to the Tales of Robin Hood, and I, I sat in that train, and in some ways, I envied those animals. <laughs> I envied those animals, because they would have they will have experienced a number of heightened emotions as they went on that final journey on that train to the kill room, to their death. A number of heightened emotions, but none of them will have been extreme boredom. <laughs> um, I... That, no. <laughs> hey. Yesterday, I was trying to think of the ultimate definition of being middle class. What is that ultimate definition? And I've come up with it. This is it. You are definitely middle class when you have that conversation about what starter you do on Come Dine With Me. <laughs> um, goat cheese is such a cop-out. Uh, listen, thank you very much. It's been very nice to speak to you all. You've been lovely. <laughs> Thank you, we've been on the radio. Thank you. That was a terrifying experience, but I got through it. Thank you for saying, I've been Richard Bacon, you've been Reg D. Hunter's audience. <laughs> Good night.